Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Common Men's Take on Sports with Kevin and Quentin. Quentin won't be here again today. He should be back for the next episode, though. Um, today I'd like to talk about a couple of things. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the significant injuries. Significant injuries to uh, or that happened in week one of the NFL. First significant injury was uh, Aaron Rodgers in the Jets. Um, you know, he uh, tore his Achilles, so he's out for the season. I think that is definitely a significant blow for the New York Jets. Quarterback is a very important position. And, um, you know, I don't think that Zach Wilson is the answer. I think they figured that out. So now the Jets got to figure out where they go from here. If I were the Jets, I would just kind of look around and see who's available uh, or if there's maybe a backup quarterback who would be available through trade. I mean, they don't have to make a trade, but I, I think that they should just kind of look around and see what's out there. Um, you know... There's still some uh, quarterbacks on the free agent market that might be viable. So I, I think the Jets just need to do their due gel diligence to maybe find a replacement for Rodgers. Um, because, you know, Zach Wilson's record right now in the NFL isn't great. Um, and I think it's definitely a significant blow for the um for the Jets because they were all in on this season based off all the moves that they made you you could tell that they were all in um, they gave up some significant uh, capital to get Rodgers from the Packers and uh, you know it's unfortunate that you know they did that and Rodgers ended up getting hurt um, it's just the nature of the game and the business obviously injuries are injuries Nobody can predict injuries. Um, but yeah, if I were the Jets, I'd definitely be um, kicking some tires, flipping over rocks, um, just to see who's available that would be a, vi a viable option. They have several uh, you know, pieces in place as far as skill players, so you wouldn't have to have a you know, superstar quarterback. Um, you know, they... They have some decent wide receivers out there with Garrett Wilson uh, and a couple other signings they made in the offseason. They have Delvin Cook and uh, Brees Hall at running back. So they're set at the skill positions. They just need a quarterback. Kind of like, you know, if they can find a guy, kind of like Brock Purdy, who just, you know, isn't a superstar but doesn't make mistakes. He gets it out to the, the skilled players like McCaffrey and uh, Debo Samuel and George Kittle. So... Uh, you know, they just need a guy like that, and I'm sure they can find one floating around somewhere who's available for a decent price. Um, you know, they've already given up so much to get what they have at this point, so they don't want to give up uh, a heck of a lot more. But, you know, you at least got to – if you're the Jets and, you know, you went all in on this season, you at least got to look around and see if there's somebody who – who's viable, who could help you out there. Because I just don't uh, think that Zach Wilson is the answer. He hasn't been the answer. And I'm probably not going to be the answer. So uh, that is definitely a significant injury for them. It's unfortunate for them. Uh, especially, you know, they had high hopes for that team. So we'll see what happens going forward. We'll see uh, see what they do. Uh, another significant injury was for the Baltimore Ravens and J.K. Dobbins. Uh, you know, he was one of the running backs that wanted a new deal uh, because the Ravens did not pick up his fifth-year option. 
Uh, and unfortunately for him, he's only had one injury-free season, which was his rookie season. He's either been injured or coming off an injury for every season thereafter. Um, and unfortunately for him, he also tore his Achilles, which is interesting that two players have the same injury um, on the same day playing in two different places. But yeah, he, uh, that's unfortunate for him. Um, he was definitely a dynamic running back. Uh, he had pretty decent hands to catch football out of the backfield if they needed him to and get a few extra yards and screen pass or whatever. Um, he During that game, before he got hurt, he did look a lot more like his old dynamic self uh, with a little bit of that speed and, and a little bit of power mixed in. But unfortunately for him, um, the injury would derail another opportunity. He had to prove he was worth the money he's asking for. Um, so I feel bad for J.K., but again, it's just the nature of football. Um, a lot of injuries happen in football because it's a very physical sport. Um, so that's unfortunate for him. Very unfortunate. Um, I don't think that his injury is, is as significant to the Ravens as um, Rodgers was to the Jets. Uh, the Ravens still have Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, uh, who both had decent games. Last game against Houston, Justice Hill had two touchdown runs on the goal line, and Gus Edwards had a couple of attempts with uh, some pretty decent success in that game. Uh, also, we obviously we all know that Lamar Jackson is also involved in their running game, which gives them a whole another dimension. So as far as Baltimore goes, um, they will be fine. I think I don't think the Dobbins injury is as significant. Um, they just have more options. I'm pretty sure that they retained Melvin Gordon on the practice squad. So I think they could always call him up if they wanted to. Uh, so so Raven, and there's always running backs, you know, available so out there. So, you know, it's... Uh, they'll be fine. Um, so the Ravens running game is usually running back up by committee anyway. It has been that way under John Harbaugh since uh, Lamar got there. Um, they had 110, 32 attempts for 110 yards and three touchdowns as a team. Uh, Lamar Jackson had six for 38 yards Gus and 6.3 yards per carry. Gus Edwards had eight attempts for 32 yards, four point oh yards per carry. Dobbins had eight attempts for twenty two yards with one touchdown, uh, two point eight average. And then, like I said, Justice Hill had eight attempts for nine yards and two touchdowns, both goal line touchdowns. Uh, and then they used eight flowers a little bit, two attempts for nine yards. So that's another option I think they have in the run game for the Ravens is uh, Zay Flowers. As a wide receiver and a rookie he looked very dynamic in that game against the Texans. Um <clears throat> He had nine receptions. He was the team lead uh, for, with nine receptions for 78 yards, and then he had two attempts for nine yards on rushing. So uh, I think Zay Flowers is another option in a rushing game. They could kind of use him like a Debo Samuel or C.D. Lamb. Um, you know, maybe pull him in the backfield and, and hand it off, or, or you know, whatever. But get him involved in the running game as well. So that the Ravens have options. Uh, so I don't think that's significant for them the other significant injury was Anthony Richardson at the end of his game he took a shot to the knee but everything came back negative so he he's only got a knee bruise uh, he should be good to go for this week if he's not he should only sit out one week and then he'd be good to go the week after that um, they're playing Houston this week so <clears throat> we'll see what happens there um we can go over a little few of the, while we're on the NFL, we can go ahead and go over a few of the results from uh, week one. Obviously, the Lions beat the Chiefs. That, that didn't, it surprised me, but it didn't surprise me because I thought the Ravens had a chance to beat the Chiefs, or the Ravens, the Lions. I thought the Lions had a chance to beat the Chiefs. I think the Lions are better than people are giving them credit for this year. I think the Lions have a real chance to win their division, NFC North, especially after uh, the games we'll talk about later in this um, podcast. But I think they have a real chance to win their division. 
And I think they have a real chance to make the playoffs. I think the Lions um, look good this year, and I think they're going to surprise a lot of people and, uh, and win some games. Now, my call the Carolina game, I knew that uh, Atlanta would probably beat them. Um, Carolina got Bryce Young. However, uh, when they made that trade up to the first pick, I was not happy with the fact that they had to include DJ Moore in that trade. DJ Moore was the one player that I thought that should have been protected. Um, now, the Panthers really don't have a deep threat weapon for Bryce Young, so he can only throw intermediate to short passes because he doesn't have anybody who can take the top off the defense or get open down the field. And so once Atlanta figured that out, you know, they just adjusted their defense and Carolina's day was over. I don't necessarily think that Bryce Young played bad. I think he did good with what he had. Um, I just think that Carolina needs to do a better job of um, giving him more help on the offensive side of the ball. Their defense was great. It looked great. Uh, Brian Burns, Derek Brown, uh, the secondary, they looked great. The defense was, you know, they, they had a few things to clean up, but for the most part, for most of the game, that defense was on it. They were all over Desmond Ritter. They were all over those running backs. Um, they just the Panthers need to invest more in their offense to help out Bryce Young. Um, it's just that he's not going to be successful if you don't give him the tools to be successful, right? That's just the nature of the game. Their running game looked good. Miles Sanders had 18 attempts for 72 yards. Nine attempt, uh, Chuba Hubbard had nine attempts for 60 yards. So running game was great. Bryce Young had a couple of uh, runs. So um, they just they need to figure out the wide receiver situation, and they need to get somebody who can be a threat downfield to kind of loosen up, the, spread out the defense, and give Bryce Young an opportunity to flourish and develop. Uh, I'm a Panthers fan, so just I was a little perturbed by that game, but I, I knew that they would they would lose um, just because they don't they didn't give him enough pieces. Baltimore looked good against Houston. We talked about that already. They're going. They're fine even without J.K. Dobbins. They're going to be fine. The Jacksonville Indy game surprised me. Indy put up a lot of fight. Honestly, if they had Jonathan Taylor, uh, that game might have been a little bit closer. Um, but it was close for most of the game. Jacksonville didn't pull away to the end. They won thirty-one to twenty-one. Um, so Indy's Indy's better than I thought they'd be. So they 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 might get some wins this year. Um, Anthony Richardson looked pretty good. Um, San Francisco looked really good. In, in my personal opinion, they're the team to beat right now in the NFL and my Super Bowl favorite. Uh, they just beat Pittsburgh into the ground, 30-7. to seven. Um, They looked good on offense and defensive side of the ball. Brock Purdy did what he does best. He protected the ball, did not turn it over, and got it out to his playmakers, right? That's all you got to do if you're on that San Francisco team with all them playmakers they have on offense. That defense is loaded, uh, even at the two deep spots. So San Francisco is definitely the team to beat. Uh, Washington beat Arizona 20-16. to I knew that they would win that. Uh, you know, obviously, Kyler Murray's hurting out for the first four weeks of the season at a minimum. So uh, I, I thought that Washington would win that game. Um, their rookie quarterback actually didn't look that bad he was okay he's in the same position as uh my guy uh Bryce Young he doesn't have a lot of work a lot to work with on the Washington team Washington Commanders team so I thought he did well with what he had um you know I thought he did good with what he had. I thought he had a solid game. wasn't great, but he's solid. Um, Cincinnati and Cleveland. Now, there was a surprise for me. That Cleveland defense looked good. They were all over Joe Burrow in that offense. Um, Joe Burrow had to pass for a season low. Uh, 
14 and 31 for 82 yards. I can't, I'd have to go back and look. I can't remember the last time Joe Burrow only threw for 82 yards um, in an NFL game. So Cincinnati's got a lot to clean up and get better at. I don't know if maybe <clears throat> they were a little rusty because uh, Burrow was injured during the offseason. They didn't get a lot of practice together, offensive line and quarterback or, or receivers and quarterback. I don't know. But, uh, man, Cleveland looks good. Um, the offense wasn't great. I was surprised that Deshaun Watson looked like he struggled a bit in that game. Um, we'll see how that goes going forward. Nick Chubb looked good. <clears throat> uh, so we'll see what that Cleveland offense looks like going forward, but they, they should be better than that. But that defense looked really good. So I was impressed by the Cleveland defense. New Orleans and Tennessee. New Orleans looked good. I thought Derek Carr looked pretty decently comfortable in that offense. I think he was, when they signed him, I thought he was a good fit for that offense. Um, 23 to 33 for 305 yards and a touchdown and one pick. Uh, QB, QBR of 96.1. That's pretty good. Um, you know, you got to give it up. I think that New Orleans is going to win their division. Um, I think New Orleans looks like a team that will be competitive this year, uh, for sure. Tampa Bay and Minnesota, that one surprised me. I thought Minnesota would win that game um, handily. They did not. Tampa Bay beat them. Baker Mayfield didn't look great, but he looked, you know, like Baker Mayfield. You know, he did just enough that the Buccaneers could win, and that's all you can ask for is your quarterback. That's the type of quarterback the Jets need, a quarterback that will do just enough to help your offense win, right? That's what Baker Mayfield did. He did just enough, not, you know, nothing crazy, nothing outrageous, 21-34, 473 yards and two touchdowns. Just enough to help his team win. That's all you need. Um, so, yeah, Tampa Bay definitely surprised me. Uh, Rams and Seattle, I thought that game would be a little bit closer. Seattle um, surprised me in that game because I, I thought either team could win it, but I thought it would be a lot closer than that. Um, so, the Rams won 30-13. Um, it didn't surprise me that the Rams won. What surprised me was Seattle only had 13 points. So um, Seattle's not as good as I thought they would be this year. We'll see what happens after week one. You know, it is just week one, so things can change and you know, as the season goes along. So we'll see. We'll keep an eye on that, on Seattle, and see what they do going forward. Green Bay and Chicago, I picked that one. I knew Green Bay would win that one. Um, as I've said in previous podcasts, the problem with Justin Fields is that he has to prove that he can read defenses and uh, beat you with his arm. Nobody, no de anybody who plays the Bears, nobody's going to be afraid of Justin Fields beating them with his arm. Um and you can tell that the Bears coaching staff do, don't have confidence in Fields' ability to read defenses or carry them with his arm based off the plays they called. They, play, they called several plays behind the line of scrimmage in the beginning of that game. And, the, Bear, and the, the Packers, once the Packers figured that out, that the own Bears coaching staff doesn't have any confidence in their quarterback's arm, like all they had to do was play close to the line, and they were smoking the Bears behind the line of scrimmage, stopping them. So, um, you know, Chicago needs to do something with Fields. Either trust him or cut him. I mean, you know, you got to do something here. But you're not going to win like that. Uh, but I, um, Jordan Love looked good. Uh, I thought the Packers did a good job of giving him some easy throws to kind of get him in the rhythm of the game. And once they did that, um, you know, he looks pretty good. He looks pretty good. 245 yards and three touchdowns. Um, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, Adam Jones had a great game. Um, Aaron, mm -mm, sorry. Uh, Aaron Jones, not Adam Jones. Uh, Aaron Jones had a good game. He really helped out uh, Jordan Love, too. He had two receptions for 86 yards and a touchdown. And then uh, he had nine attempts for 40. 41 yards and a touchdown. So Aaron Jones really helped him out get comfortable. <clears throat> and uh, 
Now, Aaron Jones had a hamstring injury, but that might just be minor. Uh, he'll he right now he's supposed to be able to play this week. Even if he doesn't, I think the Packers will be okay. Let's see who's on their schedule for this week. Um, Packers play the Falcons. They'll be fine if Aaron Jones doesn't play. Uh, so, moving on to the Raiders and the Broncos. That one surprised me. I thought the Broncos would win that game. Um, I thought Russell Wilson had a decent game. But I still think the Broncos have some things to figure out with that offense. Um, so, Vegas. Garoppolo didn't surprise me. I He's always been a good quarterback when he's healthy. Um, he actually had a great day, 20-26 for 200 yards and two touchdowns. He had one one turnover, one pick, but for the most part, he only missed six passes and threw for 200 yards and two touchdowns. So it's pretty solid from your quarterback, and that's all you can ask for. Tua had a great day against the Chargers. <clears throat> um, Dolphins won that game. That surprised me because I think I picked the Chargers to win. Uh, but Tua really went off. He was 28 to 45 for 466 yards and three touchdowns. So uh, Tua looked really good as long as he can stay healthy. Um, I might have been wrong about the Dolphins. The Dolphins might have a really good year this year. So <clears throat> we'll monitor that going forward. Philadelphia and New England. This game surprised me. Uh, I New England Patriots should have won that game. They should have beat the Eagles. The Eagles skated by with a win. Uh, on Sunday, uh, that I don't know if it was just rust or what for the Eagles, but man, they got a lot of work, a lot to work on. But the Patriots really should have won that game. Um, I was impressed with the Patriots um, and Mac Jones uh, and that defense. The de Patriots defense looked good this year, so we'll see how that goes going forward. But man, Patriots might be a uh, problem in their division. They looked good. Dallas and New York, I. Thought the New York Giants were overrated. I was correct. They are overrated. They are not very good. Dallas Cowboys mollywopped them 40 to nothing. So, uh, yeah. I'm not saying the Cowboys aren't good because they did look good. The defense looked good. The offense looked good. Um, I thought last year that Tony Pollard was better than Zeke Elliott. Uh, and he's proven so far in week one that he is. And the right decision to, to let go of Elliott was the right decision. I believe it was the right decision. So we'll see how that goes going forward. But Dallas looked good. Um, right now, they pre probably be my second team behind San Francisco just based off the week one results and, and how each team looked uh, for power rankings. Bills and Jets. Um, even with the Rodgers injury, the Jets won that game. But... It wasn't because of Zach Wilson. It was because Josh Allen uncharacteristically turned the ball over four times. He had three picks and a fumble. I don't know what was going on with him. That is very uncharacteristic for him. Um, man, uh, I don't know. I think that's a. I think that is going to be a uh, one-off deal. Um, I think the Bills will recover, and I still think they're one of the best teams in the AFC. Uh, no doubt. I think they're still one of the best teams in the AFC. So I don't uh, I don't think that they're, they're going to have any issues going forward. Um, maybe they were just not on the same page. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, we'll go from there. Uh <clears throat> One more thing I want to talk about since we've gone over the NFL week one results. I saw that uh, LeBron James has committed to the U.S. team for the Olympics next year, 2024. I think that's a good thing because, as I talked about in earlier podcasts, those, that team they assembled for the FIBA World Cup was horrible. Um, they need some veteran leadership. I see he's trying to recruit Kevin Durant and uh, Devin Booker and some of the other players to play with him in the Olympics 2024. 
I think that's a really good idea because if they roll out that team they rolled out in those FIBA championships, the U.S. will get embarrassed at the Olympics. Uh, they were absolutely get embarrassed. So they definitely need somebody. Um, so hopefully LeBron can get a couple of those vets to come help those young kids learn how to win, learn how to play basketball against uh, these foreign teams like Lithuania, Germany, Italy, uh, you know, in Canada. Uh, so we'll uh, keep an eye on that and monitor that. That it is... Uh, That'll conclude our show for today. I hope that you enjoyed listening. Uh, if you guys have any comments, please go to the Facebook my, our Facebook page. It's under first name Kevin, last name Quentin. Um, and leave your comments, um, suggestions, or if you just have ideas of uh, some sports topics you'd like for us to cover maybe in our next show, uh, you're more than welcome to drop that down there and we will try to address them. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel now under the Common Man's Take for Sports. If you guys want to go watch it, give us some views and subscribe. Or if your friends don't listen to podcasts, but they watch YouTube, then you know, tell them we have that, that over there. We appreciate the likes and the subscriptions. And then obviously we're on most podcast platforms, so please don't forget to uh, download our show. Hit, subscribe to our show if you like it, and hit the like button and leave us a... Uh, review uh, i hope you can enjoy our show and continue listening in the future uh, until next time that's all for today i appreciate you listening to our show hope to see you next time